In high definition, this is News Channel 5, where the news comes first. A day that started with severe weather ended with it as well. A line of dangerous storms seemed to select homes at random, ripping up rooftops, tearing down walls, and leveling others. Tonight, we have team coverage of the severe weather. Good evening. It was not the scene people wanted to come home to. Trees slicing through houses, garages torn apart, and roofs ripped to shreds. Tonight, we have reports near O'Fallon, Illinois, where there's damage to homes and schools. We're also live outside Mascuda, where a farmer has a lot to clean up. News Channel 5's Lisa Zygmunt begins our coverage tonight live in O'Fallon. Lisa? Okay, there is so much damage to show you. This is a light standard that the wind ripped apart, toppled over as if it was just a twig. We're going to have more on this in a moment, but first we have some amazing home video to share with you. Shot at the height of the storm. You're going to see trees and debris flying through the air as the storm began its vicious rotation. The supercell formed during dinner time. Paul and Trish Earnhardt captured its fierce intensity with sheets of rain coming down so hard, trees and houses blurred from sight. I'm used to seeing those kind of clouds being from Oklahoma, so uh, I, I figured something might happen, so I started filming it because the circulation had already started. From his second floor hotel room at the Hilton. It was uh, more of a, a howling type sound. Terry Matthews captured amazing footage of the debris being lifted and swirled about in a field not far from his room. As you can see in the video, you can see where it started picking up debris and, and uh, things like that. It never did form into a really funnel type cloud, but it, it, uh, it started picking up some debris. And when the storm had passed, sections of the north side of O'Fallon were decimated. One tree nearly split this home in two. Remarkably, authorities say there are no injuries. Wow. Up the street, Tom and Nancy McCaw had quite a story to tell. And I just pulled in and got just in the started in the garage and it just shook, didn't it? Just the windows and everything. And I threw it in reverse and got out. When they finally looked, half their garage had blown out. Everything just everything just went out. <laughs> Scared the heck out of us. A few miles away, minor damage to the roof at Fulton Junior High School, and we saw plenty of dangling sheet metal hanging from buildings and trees. We are back here live in the north side of O'Fallon, just off I-64, and Kay and Mike, can you imagine how strong the winds must have been to knock this light standard off its concrete footing? I don't think we can say it enough. A lot of damage, but it is truly a miracle that police say nobody was injured here tonight. Hey, Mike. All right, that is the amazing thing. Thank you, Lisa. The damage is also extensive south of Mascuda. Chopper 5 was in the area earlier tonight and found damage on this farm. Many buildings sustained heavy damage, and we even saw tanker trailers tossed around like matchbox cars. News Channel 5's Ryan Dean is there. He has more on that part of the story. Ryan? Okay, you saw that chopper video and the folks living in that farmhouse have an amazing story to tell and we'll get you that story real soon. But first, take a look at this house over here. This is one of many houses that were damaged tonight. This is off of Route 4 on Jefferson Road, just south of Mascuda, just one of several houses that have extensive damage, trees down, debris all over the yard. The fire chief says about six buildings, houses and some barns were heavily damaged on this road, but none worse than this farmhouse. It belongs to 80 year old Kenneth Eidman. You can see how the house is completely shredded. Neighbors are spending tonight trying to clear the debris. Mr. Eidman and his wife were inside the house when the storm hit. He says he and his wife ran into the closet, held each other tightly and said, here we go. So happy to report and truly unbelievable. She was not hurt and he has a small nick on his finger that is barely visible. Well, it's like all hell broke loose. First of years pop. And of course the roaring going on and things flying outside and rain and wind and then the house begins to disintegrate and it pops there and it pops there and one piece goes out and one piece goes in. Till it's down. How did you think you managed to survive like this? I don't know. Just stood there and watched the pieces fly. We also asked him, I said, how do you explain what happened? You, your house is destroyed, but you and your wife are, well, he, she was not hurt at all and he just had a nick on his finger. And he said the, the man upstairs was looking out for them tonight, that's for sure. And uh, 
right now, neighbors are pitching in trying to help clean up as they can, but they have a lot of cleanup to do here south of Mascouda. We're live tonight, Ryan Dean, News Channel 5. They are very fortunate. Thank you, Ryan. Homeowners south of O'Fallon spent their evening cleaning up and covering up. Chopper 5 found several homes in, Shiloh in a Shiloh neighborhood with damage. The lucky ones were missing a few shingles, but some were missing entire walls. And News Channel 5's Casey Nolan continues our team coverage tonight. Casey? Yeah, Mike, the sounds of high wind and thunder have been replaced here in the neighborhood with the sounds of hammers as people are trying to patch what's left of their roofs. Something people say they didn't hear this evening, warning sirens, likely because of just how fast this storm developed. I was in the kitchen uh, when it happened with my dad, and uh, we saw the wind was picking up. My dad was saying, uh, Josh, quick, get to the basement. As soon as he said that, the top floor windows came crashing down. It may seem strange when you survey the damage, but several people in this Shiloh subdivision say Monday night was a good night. I'm just glad that uh, I'm alive, my dad's alive, and uh, no one else around here got hurt. Some of the worst damage is at the Neff house, where the back of the garage was blown out. But just about every home in the Eagles Landing neighborhood took a hit from the storm that blew up quick around 5.30 in the evening. I was pulling them as it busted in. A bunk bed fort protected Beth Cooper's two boys and her nephew from flying glass and wood that pierced the house. And a decision to take 10 minutes for herself and Reed instead of doing the dishes, kept her out of the path of a board that broke through her kitchen window. And I was reading and all of a sudden I just started seeing things fly by the back window, so I ran upstairs, but luckily I wasn't doing the dishes. If you were doing the dishes, this, is, this would have come through here. Right here, instead of. At first I thought, well, it's probably bad, but not as bad as what she let on. Uh, but then when I drove through the neighborhood and saw it, I realized she was actually very lucky. Were you? I'm very blessed today. Very, very blessed today. We're lucky people. Thanks. Now, Beth and Will just moved here this week from Kansas. They say they lived there for four years without a storm like this. Will is in the Air Force. He was taking cover on the base when the storm blew over. There's no official word yet, but people here are convinced this was a tornado. A lot of people even described the sensation of their ears popping as the storm was going over. Live in Shiloh, Casey Nolan, News Channel 5. And we are not done with the severe weather. More is headed our way tomorrow. Meteorologist Cindy Pressler is in the Weather Plus Weather Center with a look at the forecast, Cindy. Tomorrow night, late going into Wednesday morning, that same frontal system that caused all the severe weather tonight, that's going to wobble back north as a warm front. And again, we have a chance for severe thunderstorms. But for tonight, I'm glad to say most of the severe weather has moved south of the viewing area. The only exception, southern Reynolds County. There's still a line of thunderstorms down there. Very quickly developed this afternoon along that cold front. That warm, moist air produced all the severe weather. And now we've got flash flood warnings in effect. Every county shaded in green is under a flash flood warning. That's because one to two inches, even up to three inches of rain has fallen. We'll continue to see that runoff now overnight into the rivers, creeks, and streams. We still have some pretty good sized thunderstorms south of Ellington. They are making their way to the southeast at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. And a couple of showers still east of the Missouri, one around Waterloo and another one near Centralia. These are not severe, but they still are a couple of showers that are yet to move out of the area. We still have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for parts of the News Channel 5 viewing area. This has been chopped down a great deal, but still from Jefferson County, Illinois down to Reynolds County, Missouri, that until later on this evening. Also 77 degrees. Temperatures will continue to fall 65 now in Kansas City. So here's your forecast for the rest of tonight. Just a few isolated showers, still some thunderstorms in southern Reynolds County. Elsewhere, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy. Overnight lows will drop into the 60s and then tomorrow we'll have a dry day. But again, tomorrow night you're going to have to be very alert for the possibility of severe weather. I'll have more on that in just a bit. All right, thank you, Cindy. Severe weather blew through St. Louis County this morning. Thunderstorms cut power to the St. Louis County government complex in Clayton, shutting down government, the courts, even the jail for a while. Huge electrical switches were somehow burned. A temporary courtroom has been set up in the lobby of the government center to handle emergencies. County officials think the center will be back in full operation on Thursday. Streets in University City were littered with debris from fallen trees and power lines this morning. The storms uprooted trees along Del Mar and Midland. Limbs fell into cars, trash cans were blown around. No reports of injuries, but people living in the area have a huge mess to clean up. 
A St. Louis man is feeling lucky, even though the storm caused a power line to crash onto his car this morning. 69-year-old Rufus Tillman was in Clayton, heading south on Merrimack, when a hailstorm forced him to the side of the road. The next thing he knew, a tree and a power line fell on his 2002 Dodge Intrepid while Tillman was in the driver's seat. He pried open the door and jumped over the live wires. I'm real blessed. Caught the fireman and uh, everybody asked me how, how, how did I get out of that? You know, and I just tell them, you know, I, I don't even know how I got it myself, man. <laughs> I really don't. Well, you can find much more on the storms this morning and this evening online at KSDK.com. That's where you'll find our severe weather guide, video of the damage, and much more. Be sure to send us your pictures and check out those sent in from around the area in the photo gallery section of KSDK.com. It has been more than 48 hours now since police say a babysitter kidnapped a five-month-old Madison, Illinois boy. Well, she left with my baby and I haven't seen them since. Then I want my baby back. The baby, Cortez Rose, is 22 inches long and weighs 20 pounds. He has birthmarks on his right shoulder and on his right ankle. He was wearing a red T-shirt. Cortez's mother had left him with 17-year-old Danielle Medina while she ran an errand. She has a black ponytail and orange and black bangs. She's 5 feet tall and weighs 120 pounds. She was last seen carrying a large gray purse and pushing a large brown and tan stroller. Medina also goes by the last name of Gilliard and has a history of child endangerment charges. Anyone with information is asked to call the Madison Police Department at 618-876-4300. New tonight, former Governor Matt Blunt was involved in an accident that sent one man to the hospital. It happened this evening in downtown Springfield. Police say Blunt pulled out in front of a man on a scooter. That man was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Blunt was ticketed for failing to yield. Tough news tonight for workers at the GM plant in Wentzville. An entire shift. Nearly half the plant's employees will be laid off. News Channel 5's Ann Rubin has that story. Last week was good news. The plant wouldn't close. Wentzville workers thought they dodged a bullet. But this week, it's a different story. Layoffs, nearly 900 of them. Up and down, you feel secure, then you don't. You got a wife and four kids to feed, so you just try to take it day by day and hang in there. August 10th will mean the end for the second shift. Really, it's nearly half the plant's workers gone. Shock sadness uh, you know there are some people in there that are that are numb right now the impact goes beyond just GM contractors feel it too so do surrounding companies in Wentzville without the production and without the job and without the money the economy shot well I mean reduction in uh, plan employees would be reduction in support nearby at the Lear Corporation they make seats for trucks a spokesman admits the cuts are difficult GM is their largest customer down the street at DTS, they're feeling it too. The company hauls parts for GM. The owners say they're already making adjustments to diversify their business. It is a big hit for us because, you know, we've got drivers that count on this daily as their local work, and right now we're going to have to lay them off or move into different positions. GM says sluggish sales are the reason for the layoffs. Demand for the vans here has been down, but workers say they're trying to stay positive. A turnaround could be in their future. We hope. The economy picks up, and like all the other plants that are laid off through the United States, we hope one day we come back to work. As scheduled, the Wentzville plant will be idle starting next week through the end of July. The second shift workers will have about a week back on the job in August before the layoffs take effect. Mike. And thanks. One week after the crash, the search continues for Flight 447. Next to 10, the latest on the recovery of debris and more victims. Plus, two U.S. journalists are sentenced to 12 years of hard labor in North Korea. The effort's now underway by the White House to secure their release. And if you don't own an iPhone yet, there's now one more reason to wait. Search and rescue teams.